Maxine has been working in a, a low uh, wage job, and she earned nineteen thousand dollars a year with her EIC refund, with her total tax refund. It, she received thirty seven hundred and twenty five dollars back. So that's a twenty percent increase in earnings for Maxine's household. So again, this is significant, folks. When we're working with persons who have low income. You know, we need to be talking to them about whether or not they're claiming their EIC credit. So what does a person like Maxine do with, with the credits? Well, that's the other very interesting story about earned income credit is people spend that money right away. You know, they're paying um, basic needs, food, utility bills, uh, medical care, they're paying off a medical debt. They are buying cars. So not only is it a significant earnings um, income boost for the individual family, but it also is an economic development tool. So there's money, you know, that money has that multiplier effect out in our local communities because persons are spending that money right away. So who qualifies for the EIC? And um, it's the, the, the qualifications are here. It's tiered every year and it changes. The, um, we, we set those thresholds or set at a federal level. But here you can see for a family, so an individual filing head of household, because these are individual right here, uh, individual with three or more children filing head of household, you need to make less than 43998 in AGI. And your earned income potential, your potential refund would be $5,751. You can see here that married workers filing jointly, the income threshold is higher. So, and on the federal level, there is the ability to earn, uh, to claim earned income with no children. At the state level, that differs. So, you can see here, think about some of the folks that you're serving and if they fall into these income um, buckets. So, what counts as earned income? Well, you have to have earned income. And so typically that's from W-2 employment, but it also includes self-employment. That's one of the categories of folks that we're apt to miss for earned income credit, those folks who are self-employed and not really fully part of the formal economy or not filing their taxes. It does not include income earned from things like unemployment or public benefits. And so it's specific to earned income. Uh, I think this audience might be interested with the refunds then. The refunds don't count against your public assistance. That's one of the reasons we know that people miss claiming their earned income. They're worried about that, what, what that might do for their public assistance benefits. And so persons have a full year to spend down any of the monies that they receive from their refund, um, and that would not be counted against their federal benefits. So I think that's critically important to understand. Uh, there's been a lot of talk lately about our state, if you follow the legislative news, and a lot of folks, there's some misinformation about their, uh, out there concerning our state. Not every state has an earned income credit. We're one of a um, few states in the country, but it's, it's also a very important program, and, and Julia, again, you know, uh, really uh, showed us the way about how these benefit programs um, are helpful and how you know things written in our tax code are very helpful for keeping that that poverty rate at check. And so there still is state earned income credit. These are maximum rates according again to the uh, income level and the number of children. There is no state EIC for persons who are low income that that uh, do not have a qualifying child. That differs than the, the federal program. Um, what has changed in the state, because there has been some changes recently, is the maximum amounts uh, that are tiered against the federal EIC have been lowered.